Uh, guys, we gonna want another pizza. Let me just, who's hungry? Show of hands, let me see them. The business of pizza reached over $14 billion in 2020 and doesn't look like it's slowing down anytime soon. So here to set the record straight are 10 mistakes everyone makes when ordering pizza. Ordering two small pizzas instead of one big one. 100 minus 43, take the one from the zero. Wait. <gasps> okay, this one will require a bit of math, but stick with us here and we're sure you will never make this mistake again. The first bit of math is the kind we all do when we order pizza. We look at the options and decide that instead of getting one pizza, we'll get two smaller ones because two is more than one, so two pizzas must be more pizza than one, even if that one is a larger size. And while we can't argue with the fact that two is more than one, in the end, the math doesn't work out in your favor on this one. And yes, of course, someone has done the math. And what one pizza-loving Twitter user discovered is that, for example, one 18-inch pie is more pizza than two 12-inchers. I can't, I can't believe. <laughs> but 12 plus 12 is 24, you say? And yes, you're right about that, but that's looking at the wrong numbers. You see, the fact is that we need to look at the total amount of pizza surface area, and on that front, one 18-inch pie provides hungry humans with 254 square inches of pizza, while two 12-inch pies would give those same folks only 226 square inches of pizza. That's 28 less square inches of pizza, which, based on the average is almost one full-sized slice. And when is one more slice not an awesome thing to have? Do you know the three-eighths rule? What? what no one wants to waste food, but you also don't want to be the guy that doesn't order enough pizza for the group, leaving everyone hungry and disappointed. So how do you know how much pizza to order? Well, according to Giordano's Pizza Restaurant, a good rule of thumb to consider when ordering is the 3 8 rule. This is the rule that assumes that medium pizzas are usually cut into eight slices, and that, in general, the average person will eat three slices of pizza. So now all you need to do is some quick math and multiply the number of people by 3 eighths and round up. For example, 10 guests times 3 eighths equals 3.75, which rounded up means you will want to order four pizzas. Easy peasy. And yes, we understand that trying to do math when you're hungry isn't always easy, but that's why we have that calculator app on our phones. You might want to make little adjustments depending on the type of people that will be eating. For example, kids will probably average only two slices. Also, the type of pizza matters, as folks will eat more thin crust pizza than that Chicago deep dish pie. Literally, some food for thought. Getting too many toppings. No, I can't take it. I can't take it, Jerry. It's too much. It's too much. There is an expression that goes, the more the merrier. However, when it comes to toppings on your pizza, the better expression may well be, less is more. We will say that yes, more toppings can make for a great pizza with a nice mix of flavors, but just don't think you're actually getting more bang for your buck. Places like Domino's do offer various price brackets for the number of toppings, but if you were ordering seven or eight or nine toppings, trying to beat the system, uh, just know that you aren't. According to a former Domino's employee, when you order over four toppings, you actually receive less of each topping on the pizza. So we suggest that you stick to four toppings or fewer, and then when you get the pizza home, you can throw on some of your own toppings, such as onions or arugula. Mmm, onions both add a great flavor profile and texture, and since you're doing it yourself, you can put as much as you want on your pie. We know plenty of you shower your pizza with hot sauce at home, so why not top it up with extra goodies as well? Eating it before you reheat it. Look at this thing, it's all hot and glowy. I'll never have cold pizza again. <laughs> okay, so we know we told you to cut the pizza yourself so that it stays warmer during transportation, and that's it's still true, although for some, no matter how fast it arrives, it's still not the ideal temperature. And that makes sense, given that the pizza has been out of the oven for a while by the time the delivery person rings your doorbell. So why don't you just go ahead and put it in the oven yourself?
yourself. But if you're going to take our advice and reheat it, make sure you do it properly. You don't want to cook the pizza for 10 to 15 minutes here. We are just getting it hot. Think about it. So preheat the oven to 500 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, as the oven heats up, place a baking sheet in the oven. That way, when the oven hits 500 degrees, the pan will be nice and hot as well. Then all you do is toss your pizza onto the hot pan, real easy to do if it isn't cut, and let it heat up for five minutes. After five minutes, you will have a nice hot pizza, and the preheated pan will also have crisped up the crust as well. Pure culinary magic. Magic. Storing and reheating your leftovers. After my divorce, I was not at my best. I ate leftovers. First, let's talk about storing the leftovers. So you have a few slices left and you want to save them for tomorrow. So you just grab the box and stuff it on a shelf in the fridge. Wrong. As most of us have discovered, because the majority of us have all done exactly that, that leads to dry and hardened pizza. Ugh, no one wants that. So it only takes a few extra minutes, but it's well worth it to get a plate and then stack the leftover pieces on top of each other with a layer of parchment paper or aluminum foil, or even wax paper between each piece. Then plastic wrap the whole thing and into the fridge that pizza tower goes. Now, we know that for a lot of people, cold pizza is what life's all about. But for those who want to reheat your pizza, please don't use your microwave. I'm for real. I'm for real. The microwave is good for some things, but heating up pizza isn't one of them, unless you want it warm and soggy. No, but to get the full value of your reheated za, you will want to put it on a baking sheet for about 10 minutes in a 375 degree oven. Prefer to use the stove top? No problem. Just put it in a pan, add a couple drops of water, and cover the pan to let the dough crisp up and the toppings steam and melt. And presto, it's ready. Not knowing about double cut. Double the weapons, double everything. Now, while under most circumstances we recommend asking for the pizza not to be cut and cutting it yourself, there are exceptions to this rule. Like when you're having a big party or maybe doing pizza outside in the park, for example. You don't want to have to remember to bring your pizza cutter to the park with you. And when you have a big party and are ordering multiple pizzas, you don't want to spend time cutting it all yourself. You just want to open the boxes and let your guests go at it. But while in these situations we want the restaurant to cut our pizza for us, we also want them to do a double cut. This means cutting every slice twice, creating double the number of slices. Smart, Ann. Smart. Why do you want more, smaller slices of yummy pizza, you ask? Well, if there are kids at the party, it probably means less waste from them eating half their slice and then handing the rest to the dog. But it's great for grown-ups also. Maybe you usually feel full after one and a half slices or two and a half triangles. Well, now that extra half that you usually chow down just because it's there isn't there anymore to overstuff your belly. And it also means more slices of all the different pizzas you order, so everyone has more opportunities to try each kind. Not ordering it well done. Well done, Brian. Well done. Yes, we know, well done is not generally how you want to order any food, and when it comes to your steak, we wholeheartedly agree with that rule. However, when it comes to pizza, you need to start breaking that never well done rule. All you have to do is ask for it well done, and really it only means a couple of extra minutes in the oven, so it's not going to delay your dinner's arrival much, if at all. And if you don't believe us, at least believe the science of the Maillard reaction. For those unfamiliar, the Maillard reaction is a chemical reaction that occurs when food is cooked at high temperature. A reaction that, to put it simply, transforms the sugars and proteins in the food to create new smells and flavors that are very appealing to our human taste buds. Mm, smells like opportunity. Ugh. Just think about how much better roasted vegetables are than the ones that get thrown in boiling water or steamed. Well, by cooking your pizza just a little bit longer, you are allowing for that Maillard reaction to take place, thus uplifting the tastiness of your pizza. Ideal. Letting them cut it for you. No, 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 don't, 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 don't do it. 
we'll be honest, we didn't really know that telling the pizza place not to cut the pizza was even an option. And when we found out it was, we didn't know why anyone would ever bother making such a request. As most of you were probably thinking, all that does is give you more to do before you can stuff that delicious za in your mouth. But allow us to explain. If you get yourself a nice rolling pizza cutter or one of those awesome double-handle machete-looking things, you can cut the pizza exactly how you want it, with the sizes that match the people eating it. And sure, that's all good, but the bigger reason to ask for your pizza delivered uncut is that cut food cools faster. So asking for it uncut means it will keep the heat in and stay warmer longer during transportation. Along with it being warmer when it arrives at your door, it will also be crispier. The science here explains that cutting it prior to delivery allows for the sauce and such to drip into the cuts and soggy it up. How? Physics. But cut it yourself and you get it warm with a crispy crust and in the exact size you want. See, there is a method to this madness. Why aren't you complaining? Let me ask you something. How hard is your job? There are those that don't need our encouragement to complain, as if it feels like doing so is just part of their DNA. And there are those who get the wrong order and just accept the mistake. Okay, before we get into this one any further, we need to say right off the bat that we never condone being rude to anyone. So when we say you should complain, we mean you should complain nicely and politely. But if your pizza arrives at your house and it isn't what you ordered or something is off about it, you need to call the restaurant and tell them. It takes very little time, and the possibility of free food is very likely to be in your future. Ah, very nice. As an ex-Domino's employee said, just let them know something was wrong and they'll almost always offer you free food, coupons, etc. Having said that, we do understand that Domino's is a huge company, so giving away a free pizza on your next order isn't going to hurt their bottom line. With that in mind, your local pizza place might not be so quick to hand out freebies. But then again, they just might be. It certainly doesn't hurt to ask. Just don't be a jerk and lie about something just to get free food. That is just bad pizza karma, and no one wants that. Not placing the pizza at level on the ride home. Yikes, that's a recipe for disappointment. When you order your pizza for delivery, the manner in which it is transported is out of your hands. We've all had great delivery drivers who get the pizza to your door in tip-top shape, and others who, based on the look of the pizza when you open the box, appear to have tossed it around the car and found the bumpiest roads on the way to your house. No, God! Now, if you pick up your pizza, then you can control the transportation variables on the ride home, meaning you can do what needs to be done done to keep it level. So don't just throw the box onto the passenger seat beside you, because as we know, the seat is on an angle, and so too will be your pizza box. But have no fear, because fixing that problem requires nothing more than the can of soda you also ordered. You see, if you lay the can on its side and put it in the crevice of the seat, you can lay the box down and it will be pretty much perfectly level. Trying to drink less sugar? Don't have a can of soda? Well, there are probably a number of items in your car right now that will do the trick. We're serving up more great videos. Just tap or click, hit that subscribe button, and ring that bell to join our notification squad. And hey, leave us a comment.